Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And that was, I thought, a great setup by uh, the great Randy Weingarten to, to set us up. So um, you have to pardon me. I'm still playing the new card. Um, <laughs> And I'm going to play it for a, little, for, for a little while. So I come from the local labor movement. Um, and I'm still struggling to adjust to the culture and attitudes and the smartness of DC. Um, uh, DC and entirely the uh, corridor in, our, in, in, in this area. So um, look, our core mission at the, at the labor movement is at the end of the day to build work organizations for workers. So that workers can ex exercise their power to better their own lives. Uh, that has been the, the, you know, you know, the role of the labor movement for generations. But as our country and our society and the global economy changes, so must we. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Do we need to adjust, or do we need to throw the baby with the bathwater? I think that's what the crossroad is. I think that's what, where we are at. So let me tell you a little bit about myself and how someone with a funny accent and the way I look end up here. Um, you know, I got my first union job working at UPS. And I didn't go looking for the union. The union found me. Um, I got a night shift job as a part-time worker. Uh, I'm used to working liquor stores in unorganized places. And the first opportunity I got to work in a union, and the union rep coming and talking to me, and giving me a union card, and telling me what time I take my break, and my responsibilities to be a productive worker, and how I represent and I uh, have a role in being the best at that workplace, because whatever I do reflects back to all of us what makes the union at that workplace. Uh, even though I went to graduate school, I never ever left the labor movement ever since then because that's what I wanted to do. I saw the power of being empowered by knowing that you have other workers at your workplace who look after you. And you're not on your own. And that fundamental value, we can't, we shouldn't, we could not ascertain actually of abandoning, leaving, or throwing away. Because without that, we don't have a movement. Now, we have a lot of things that are ailing us. Randy talked about the organized attack that comes at us. The organized attack that comes at us. Sometimes people tell me, you know, uh, how come the, 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 the gay and lesbian movement is actually proceeding a lot faster than the liver movement is in changes happening? even on immigration, even on, 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 on everything else. But I'll tell you, corporations and the ruling class, even if they don't like it, it's, they, it's easier for them to adjust on something that doesn't cost them anything. We are sitting at the table and saying, we want our fair share. They are never, ever, ever going to give you that because you have a good slogan. They're going to give you that because you're going to fight for it. And it's not fighting for it from an intellectual perspective, but fighting for it by bringing workers together and allowing workers to decide what's best for them. What's best for them. So let me go back to my adjustment I'm trying to have in DC and the intellectual class in DC. We try to position ourselves a lot to be an agent for workers without including workers at the table. I am not giving up. I'm never going to give up. And we should never give up on the actual rank and file workers having a space to fight for themselves. We should facilitate that, but we should never take that away from them. And I think that's what the intellectual class tries to do, not from coming from evil, 
But I think it is sort of giving up. Workers don't have the power to do these things, so I'm going to negotiate for them. Yes, we should raise minimum wages. Yes, I'll walk and I'll fight to raise the minimum wage. But I want to fight, I want to walk for the minimum wage with other workers who will gain from the minimum wage. I don't want to do a back, a back room deal of persuading elected officials or whoever to raise the minimum wage without workers actually lifting a finger for it. Because that's not allowing you to build a movement. In order to build a movement, we need to always keep the workers at the center of our thinking and value them for what they do. It doesn't happen in this, in this town just only on workers. It happens on immigration. It happens on everything else. We have a lot of people from the bottom of their heart, good people who want to fight for immigrant rights, but they don't think of having sitting down with immigrants themselves and saying, I want to empower you to go fight for yourself. So, in Orange County, uh, look, people say, California, you do a lot of things because California is a set, a set place. I'll invite anybody who, who wants to do work to go to Orange County and see if Orange County is not anything but California. So, let me give you one example, what we did with the Teamsters. In the 1999, the Teamsters tried to organize sanitation workers in Anaheim, California. These are people, not the trash collectors, but after all your trash goes in, these are people who lined on the side of, sides of a belt and with their hands go through trash to look for recyclables. Just imagine what you throw into your black garbage bin from roadkill to syringes. That's what they do. So when they tried to organize them, the company immediately called ICE and most of them got deported. That has a huge chilling effect for people. And the union didn't go back. So Ron Herrera, who's the president of that local, always brags in Orange County, we have a huge union density. And one day when we're visiting the site, I, I saw these people coming and going from the site. And I asked him, are they your members? He said, no, they're not. And he told me about what happened in 1999. Here is where we need to focus on our community. From the network of about 50 churches we work with and community organization we work with, in our next meeting, I brought this up and I said, if we're not fighting for these people, who are we fighting for? What, are, what is the purpose of our existence as a movement? So we turned part of the organizing over to the community. And we use the community to put pressure. And all we asked them was, go back to the company and ask them to sign on a piece of paper. They're not going to call ICE on their workers anymore if they try to organize. When that happened, we started working with the Teamsters. And long story short, within seven months, 700, it's not a lot of people, people's mind, 700 sanitation workers today have a collective bargaining. They get two-week vacation. They have health care. They get a limited amount of gloves. That, to me, is what the labor movement needs to live for and need to survive for. And these people just don't have a base. They have a collective bargaining. They sat across the, the, the table from their, their employer and got what rightfully was theirs. <laughs> so we need to change course on a lot of things. But we need to use the infrastructure of centuries, uh, the decades and decades of infrastructure that the labor movement has built. I don't think we should be ready to abandon it and to throw it out. At the end of the day, we are the only thing left between, t between what would happen in this country, even worse than what's happening, that's why, like Randy said, they come after us. You take us out of the game. You take the movement out of the game. You take the entire progress movement out of the game. They're not dummies. They know that. So how do we move forward? How do we move forward? Randy was also right. 
I come from California. We have one defensive fight after defensive fight after defensive fight. If we can defeat three consecutive, practically consecutive pay paycheck deception initiatives with hundreds of millions of dollars being spent, I think we have it within us if we actually reprogram ourselves and go on the offensive and take things from the, from the other side, we can actually win. So I have two minutes left. And in that two minutes, I want to give you just a few examples. This is not, by the way, to, in a way to say, in any way to say, the course we're traveling is right and we should stay. But I want to give you a, 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 a examples of actually organizers, as we speak today, who are going and talking to unions, to si workers to sign up into, into a union and signing up and winning. Signing up into a union and winning. So, more than 12,000 workers at the merged US Air and American Airlines, who did not have a union before, have joined CWA. Just this past year. Just this week, 20,000 flight attendants at Delta have filed to have a union election. Still works being done and works happening. Graduate teaching assistants at New York University at the University of Connecticut just, just joined UAW and now have collective bargaining. Car wash workers in Los Angeles and New York organized in partnership with community organizations to join the steel workers in the RWDSU. Bike share workers in New York, Boston, Washington, Chicago have voted to join KWU. Manufacturing engineers are coming together, partnering with Lane. I know someone from Lane is going to be presenting later on. Are changing the way procurement works and through that process creating a venue for workers to have a collective bargaining agreement and confront their employers at the workplace. TV writers and reality, show, re re reality shows in New York have recently joined the Writers Guild East. So a lot is happening. We can't do a lot more. That's why we're working with our community organizations and community workers. I see Christina here that there's nothing more I value than the organizations that Christina leads in the Casa de Maryland and all the vibrant worker centers that are, that, that, that are popping up all over the place. But at the end of the day, my message today, right or wrong, is we need to be considerate of workers and we need to empower workers to decide for themselves. Even though we need intellectuals, but the intellectuals themselves don't create a movement. Thank you.